Bursting through the half gap tells a story about the first black rugby player, Errol Tobias, who uh, played in the Springbok rugby team under the apartheid regime in 1980. One would think that uh, this achievement would be celebrated by the black community at the time, but many viewed him as a traitor for taking the opportunity that was afforded to him. One of his critics was the apartheid activist, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who said, as I cope, quote, he is helping to just and unjust in human political system, close code. Author Hendrik um, Weinhardt joins us in the studio this morning to talk to us more about this book. Goedemorgen, bye, welcome. Bye, thank you for the brilliant. It's a pleasure. We are. Now, about the book, it was released only last week Friday, but he has already told his story in his own book. What inspired you to write this book as well? I started before he started with his own book. Um, I started around 2009. I lost the first manuscript around 2011. And then I decided that I should continue with this task that I've started yeah. so many years ago. So you had to rewrite the whole thing over again? Uh, pretty much, yes. <laughs> but but a, a second take normally, or oftentimes, mm -hmm. um, produces a better product. Uh, and true. I think in this case, it is true. Um, also, when I read his book, I thought he was underestimating the, I mean, the, the hugeness of this achievement. Um, so I decided to continue with my, my project and I, I have obviously uh, the benefit of his own book having been published and then I've consulted many mm -hmm. sources, historical sources and interviewed a lot of people whereas he only relied on his own human memory. Yeah, yeah. So both of you are from the same town? Caledon. We're from a beautiful western. town called Caledon in the Western in Cape. In the Western yes. Cape. So, but what do you think of his history? Do you think that he's one of those unsung heroes in South Africa, maybe? I think people are starting to give uh, him credit, uh, particularly because the debate over producing black springboks mm -hmm. is still a hot potato, as I call it. Um, he played in a very difficult time. Uh, 1980 was, it was still dark in it South was, Africa. Yeah. So, um, so the fact that he could despite the discrimination, despite the accusations from the black community or colored, if you like, that he was now selling out, um, the fact that he could still go onto the, the field and produce performances that, I mean, will still make you so excited when you see him on YouTube running on that field. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think it's also part of a larger debate on how we should judge people who decided to take those opportunities, few as they may have been in, in the dark days. And that's why I use half gap symbolically um, because, well, he was a master at, at slipping through half gaps on the field. Yeah. But it also points to the, the lack of opportunities or the few opportunities that are still available um, or to even black or players today in, in South Africa. Yeah, but give us more perspective on why was he mostly criticized by the black people. I mean, you're saying that he was being called a sellout, a traitor. Yeah. But why was the situation? Was it perhaps motivated by the Den regime? Well, it's, it's because he was one of not even a handful mm. who got an opportunity. So there were many other very talented black sports people in the country who never got an opportunity to uh, represent the national team or who chose not to because of the apartheid policies. You may recall that there was an organization called SACOS. Their logo or slogan was, no normal sport in an abnormal society. Now, uh, in the book, Mr. Tobias is quoted as saying that I was a sportsman, not a politician. Mm. And it actually brings me to my next question as to, how did he feel back then um, with the opportunity that was presented to him, but, you know, his black people saying something else totally different. I guess you could call him a, a very talented sports person, um, lowly educated and politically naive. So to him it was all about the game. Mm. And, and I mean he speaks of standing at Newlands rugby ground and the old national anthem playing and him saying to himself it has never sounded so beautiful to me than on that particular day. So obviously majority of black people would listen to that and think, oh, how is it how possible? How is he saying that? Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. it's just a pity that, I mean, he's, he's stuck to his, his version, which is, I simply played rugby and I wanted to show white and black that when given an opportunity, we are as good as the White Oaks. Yeah, I wanted to ask if he ever regretted grabbing that opportunity that was presented to him. 
Not at all, but he at some point regretted having toured with the Springboks on the 1981 tour to New Zealand. There were lots of demonstrations there. And in the camp, he was sidelined. So at some point he was considering returning to South Africa. But again, he says he was convinced to stay for the, you know, the bigger benefit of um, uh, affecting change in the country. Mm, mm, mm. Talking about change in the country, I know that in the book he, he talks about uh, our late president, Dr. Nelson Mandela, inviting him and Chester Williams yeah. and their wives to dinner. And that's where Madiba was actually telling him that he used to read about him in newspapers while he was still in prison. And that gave him hope that uh, South Africa will eventually be free. Yeah, so in, in, in rugby, number 10 is a decision-making uh, uh, position on the field. And he... He says, um, one obviously can't ask Madiba about it anymore, but he says, Madiba said to him, when you were selected for the Springboks in that key position, back at Robben Island, we were looking at it and telling ourselves that this may just be the sign of better things to come. Um, it's one of those instances where you, I mean, you have to accept his version, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of people obviously won't believe that um, Madiba could say that, because 1984 on Robben Island was still, as you know, 10 years before uh, 94. Mm. As much as, you know, black people criticized him for being part of the Springboks then, but in the book here, he talks about some Afrikaners coming to him and telling him that he's actually one of the best South African fly halves. Mm. Did such views motivate him to even go further? Um, I think yes. Um, it was obviously important for him to be accepted by all rugby watching South Africans. Um, so I think when, when, when white rugby supporters gave him compliments, it would have almost felt better than us from his own community mm. um, uh, congratulating him. And he was a really good player. So the book was only released last week Friday. Yeah. Does he have a copy as it is now? He doesn't have one yet. I am going to Cape Town uh, tomorrow okay. and I'm hoping to take him a copy over the weekend. All right. What are you looking forward to, your conversation with him? I mean, it's someone that you grew up looking up to. You were telling mm. me earlier on that you e even used to run after him and during yeah. those times. Yeah. So I believe that you're looking forward to the conversation. So I used to be a sand boy, a young boy in Caledon yeah. who would take the sand onto the field for him to kick. And now I'm able to take him this book Insane. as a result of many years of admiring him and um, of, of doing research to complement his own book, I mm. have to add. Mm. Well, that's a beautiful thing. But the book, is it available now? For the book is already available on loot.co.za. And obviously I also sell from the boot of my car <laughs> as all self-publishing um, <laughs> authors have to do, yes. All right, Nia, on Slosnet Net, Dabaya Baya Danki. Well, there you have it. That's Hendrik uh, Weinhardt. He is the author of Bursting Through the Half Gap. It tells a story about the first black rugby player, Errol Tobias, who played um, in the Springbok rugby team back in the 1980s. So as he said, the book is available and also available from his boot car, his car boot driver. <laughs> Let's take a break here on Morning Live.